everyone, thanks so much for being here. My name is Kat and I make houseplant videos here on Good and Planty. If you just saw up to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All these things help me grow my channel like a plant. Super fun video today. We will be pot decorating. I have a few little supplies here. I only have black and white acrylic paint, so we're gonna have to get creative. <laughs> and then of course I have my little Mod Podge spray. Those are my supplies for pot painting today. I had you all on Instagram send me your plant care questions. I'm gonna cover a broad range of topics here about very common plant care questions, common issues you run into, and hopefully I can help you today while we create a little pot. But first, I wanna say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in a broad range of topics that are completely ad free. My favorite way to think about Skillshare is a way to invest in yourself and kind of prioritize your self care and wellness. I have learned so much from Skillshare over these past few months, but I recently just finished a course called Illustration and Inspiration, Keeping a Sketchbook by illustrator Leah Gorin. I am always in awe of artists and their talent, and this course made it feel really easy to just kind of sink into my own creativity, and we will be using some of that today. The first thousand people to use the link in my description box down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, so go ahead and check it out. And now we're just gonna jump into the video. This mic shadow is driving me crazy. So I'm gonna move it and hopefully I sound okay. <laughs> the basics of, oh my God, I need tape, hold on. Okay, I have a little inspiration on Pinterest that I'm gonna follow and hopefully it comes out good. I'm gonna tape off my little sections. Okay, I think that feels cute. Okay, and then we'll do another one. Okay, we are taped and I'm gonna start painting with the black paint. We're gonna jump into it. So let's see our first question. Easiest way to separate roots and moss. I regret using moss to propagate. That is from Stephanie and Stephanie, oof. We have all been there, but don't let it shy. Well, don't let yourself shy away from using sphag to propagate because it is a wonderful propagation method. A lot of plants really enjoy growing roots in sphag. I know Hoya, for example, are one that really love it. A lot of people are like pro dry sphag removal or wet sphag removal. Personally, I kind of like it when it's wet because everything is a little bit less brittle. So I kind of soak the moss in the roots, make sure that everything's kind of damp and then kind of massage slowly all of the moss away from the root ball. The thing, that I really wanna emphasize is it's okay if it's not perfect. You are probably not going to get all of the moss off. The beauty of the moss, and it goes for perlite as well, is that you can just pop them up with that moss attached. Of course, I wouldn't go overboard because you could have some rot, but it doesn't have to be like a perfect removal by any means. You should be completely fine with having a little extra moss hanging onto the root ball. I would go ahead, remove as much as you can, dampen it, remove a little bit more, and then whatever is left, honestly, just pot it it right up into your soil of choice. Those are my words of wisdom with the, uh, oh my God, I dumped out way too much paint for a four inch pot. But that is my advice for removing moss. Okay, what's next? What is the best way to keep moss poles consistently moist? That is a very common question. I actually have a whole video on moss poles. I'm probably gonna plug a few videos here just because I'm not gonna go as in depth on these answers as I would in, these, in the videos I'm plugging. At the end of the day, it matters what kind of moss pole you have. A sphag pole is going to stay a lot moister than a 
a, a cocoa pole or something like that. I also think high humidity is key there. Keep it near a humidifier or keep it in a greenhouse of some sort. You will definitely see that it stays moisture for longer. If not, just keep it part of your watering routine. That's what I did with my micans for a while. I would water the moss pole like every one or two days, but the environment wasn't very humid, so it would dry out very quickly. At the end of the day, humidity is key. At the same time, I am not perfect at keeping my moss poles moist and my plants still grow with them and are happy. It's mostly about just making sure that you're also attaching your plant to the moss pole with ribbon or wire or Velcro of something of that sort and you should be fine. So there you go. Next question. Tips to get Hoya blooms. So I'm not an ex expert in this by any means. I am fairly new to Hoya and I have no shame admitting to that at all. I know how to care for them, but I haven't had all that many blooms in my time. I get the most peduncles when I keep plants or Hoya in very bright light. So when they're a little bit stressed, honestly, you are more likely to get a bloom from my experience. That is the best advice I can give you. After you get a peduncle, just be super careful with that growth point. If you don't know, peduncles are where Hoya blooms come out of. It's kind of like the first sign that you're about to get a flower. They are very exciting. Just keep an eye out for those peduncles. And once you get a peduncle, make sure that you are being super careful around it. Maybe a little bit of added humidity could help out just so it doesn't dry out. Um, too early, but to get it to bloom, I definitely recommend actually stressing your Hoya a little bit with some brighter light. And fertilizer. You cannot forget the fertilizer. <laughs> what plant pests do you find most annoying to battle? Okay, that is a great question. I have a lot of um, pest questions actually in this little answer box. The pests that I've encountered are fungus gnats, mealybugs, thrips, and um, spider mites. Those are the ones that I have personally dealt with. I think the most annoying one is probably, this isn't dry yet, I'm just impatient, is probably, you know, mealybugs are actually so stubborn. They don't go away. I used to think that mealybugs weren't that big of a deal. You kind of just take the cotton swab with the alcohol, you take them off and they're gone. But those are some of the most persistent pests that I've ever encountered. It took like fresh soil, very consistent treatment to get rid of it and a lot of isolation because the mealybugs will spread. They're also kind of cute. They look a little bit like little like cotton fluffs, but they are quite disgusting when you see them close up. So <laughs> I am not a big mealy fan. Spider mites are also disgusting and they travel a lot faster. Same with thrips. But for some reason, I have been able to eradicate both, both of those pests way easier than any mealy bug infestation I've had. Every pest is quite a bit different, but as a blanket treatment for uh, thrips, mealy bugs, and spider mites, I would say if it's a fairly intense infestation, you're gonna want to completely re repot that plant. So take it out, treat the pot that it's in because plant uh, these pests will actually kind of like make their way into the porousness of the terracotta. So treat the pot, hose down the plant, the roots, the whole thing, then treat it with whatever insecticide you want to use. I If it's that bad, I don't use neem anymore. I actually switched to, um, what is it called? Oh, Bonide 8 is what I like to use. Treat it and then repot it in fresh soil that you know is good and then continue with that treatment just on the leaves and the stems for however long the bottle says. It's usually like a few weeks or so. Make sure you're very thorough in your treatment. You wanna get all around the lobes at the top of the leaves. You wanna get the underside of the leaves, the stems, the petioles, everything. You wanna make sure you are fully treating that plant because if you just miss one bug, they'll be back. <laughs> That's kind of like my blanket answer for those kinds of bugs. I also do have a fungus gnat question. Let me see. How to get rid of slash control fungus gnats. The key there 
and a lot of people are like oh i've tried everything and i believe you fungus gnats are very annoying to get rid of however i don't think that they are the worst pest because they are far more annoying for us than the plant it takes a very serious infestation for the plant to actually get damaged for fungus gnats you have to treat every life stage of the fungus gnat and i have a whole video on it so i will plug it the key there is to make sure that you are getting the soil so for that that's like using mosquito bits or um some people use hydrogen peroxide then you also want to make sure you're getting the adults and for that you can use sticky traps and i love sticky traps so much they attract multiple kinds of pests like thrips i think as well but i've had a lot of success with using those for fungus gnats i would say between mosquito bits and the sticky traps you can get a huge bulk of the fungus gnats gone and you just have to be persistent with it and then a key like preventative measure is also to make sure that you're letting the top part of your soil dry out because that is the breeding ground for fungus gnats so if you remove the fun the breeding ground for them they will kind of you know slowly die out so make sure that you're also watering adequately for whatever plant it is all right let's see what we're working with now oh what is this? A Good and Plenty mug available at goodandplenty.store. No way. No way. <laughs> so I'm going to get all the black off. Now, if I was responsible, I would wait for all of the black paint to dry and then tape it off again and go in with the white. But we're being impatient today. It is what it is. I have no high expectations for what this pot is going to come out. <laughs> to be at all okay while we're doing this let's look for another question lots of fungus not questions definitely check out that video because i go way more in depth in that video but as like a quick tip that's what i would say why do my succulents keep dying succulents are interesting because they are definitely marketed as easy care hard to kill plants which is true to an extent but i think that a lot of people feel defeated when they get a succulent and they end up killing it and that's because it's they're not they still require some knowledge and care they are not like just set it and forget it plants you absolutely have to give them adequate light otherwise they will atelier and get really stretched out and leggy and not really what you want them to be that can be like a southern facing window even that's ideal then for watering you don't want to over water because they are very susceptible to root rot. I probably water my succulents like every two weeks or something like that, but they still do need water. You can't just completely forget about them. The thing with succulents that is helpful is that they are vocal. Generally speaking, when they are thirsty, their leaves, their leaves will uh, retain the moisture when they are well hydrated but when they are thirsty they will lose a lot of the water retained in their leaves and then they will get very soft and wrinkly that is a good way a good indicator of um, them needing water when you water your succulents do not mist your succulents and i'm going to tell you why because you kind of need in a, in a sense to train their root system to dig deep and get big and strong if you are misting your plants the root system is going to understand that water is at the top and they don't need to dig deep they don't need to create like a dense root system it's gonna be very shallow however if you wait the two three weeks to water your succulents whatever i'm speaking kind of generally kind of suss out what makes sense for your succulent but if you wait that time and then you drench the entire pot the root system is way more likely to grow down big and strong over time you will find you have a much happier succulents. Succulents can be easy once you kind of get the hang of them, but it's not one of those things where I would say off the rip, they're classically easy plants. You still, you kind of have to know what you're doing a little bit. That's my passionate speech on succulents. <laughs> Find another question. Fungus gnats, fungus gnats, fungus gnats. <laughs> just jumping around for whatever i want to talk about right now what to do with a comically long thin wobbly snake plant leaf my plant wants to tip over it's so heavy i actually had a very similar situation with a uh, propagation i potted up snake plants will grow very tall over time but they can be a little bit of slower growers so if you're waiting on pups to kind of stabilize the pot it can take some time and get very annoying what i uh, would recommend doing sorry i need my focus right now okay what i would
would recommend doing is either, I had a steak in mind, like a little short bamboo steak in mind for some time just to add a little bit of added stability for that one leaf. However, at the end of the day, I think the fastest, most rewarding solution is to either add more propagation to that pot or you can just go buy a few little snake plant babies and pot them up in there. I know that's probably like not the solution you wanted. Maybe you wanted something more fancy and creative, but sometimes if a plant of mine isn't doing well, I will literally just stick in another healthy plant in there and just kind of like hope for the best and disguise the wonky plants with a fuller one that I buy. Yeah, group up group up some more plants in there and you should be good. And the pot will be more balanced and you can probably even pot it in a bigger pot if you want, if you're feeling crazy. Can I reuse soil where a plant died? Short answer, no. I wouldn't recommend it. You can, you can take the plant, the dead plant out and you can treat the soil. There's tons of videos out there on how to do it. I've honestly never done that, so I'm not gonna speak on it, but I know it can be done. I don't really recommend doing it because unless you for sure know why that plant died, you're just kind of like increasing your risk for infecting a new plant with either root rot that's kind of because the thing with root rot is it can live in the the spores can like live in the pot as well you can pass along pests you can pass along bacteria of some sort in short usually if a plant is dead i will completely toss that soil out i know it's probably bad you guys can yell at me i really prioritize keeping the health of the collection entirety intact over one plant. There is like an infestation, for example, that's out of control and I'm worried about my other plants, I am very likely to toss that plant over risking my entire collection. This is so relaxing. I'm obsessed with this process. Oh my God. Guys, I should pick up painting. Okay, we're almost done. So I'm gonna pick one more question. Sorry, I'm talking so quietly. I'm just so focused. All right, one more question. How can I tell if a plant is getting too much light? So that's a great question. You will notice there's a few signs you can look for. The top one is visually, the leaves will like literally start burning right before your eyes. And that can look like yellowing leaves, depending on the plant, like a little bit of a reddish hue. There can either also be some blistering on the leaves, believe it or not. I've had a few plants do that over time. The big hue, oh my God, it messed up. The big visual cue that I would pass along to you guys is if that damage is happening on like one section of the plant that's facing a light source that means that it's too much light because if it was a watering issue or something like that then it would impact the entire plant however with a lot of plant placements it's usually pretty clear to see like if the side that is facing the window sorry i was talking too much and my camera stopped but i was gonna say the the good news about light damage is that it's very easily fixed. You just have to move the plant, prune it back a little bit, and you should be in business. So I'm gonna wrap this up now because I'm clearly talking too much. My camera is sick of me. I'm gonna remove this tape as well. <gasps> Cute, okay. We went for very simple. You can see these pots on like Pinterest all the time, but I really like the three, the concept of the three colors. She needs to dry and then I'll Mod Podge her. The lines are not perfect, I know, I rushed it. And I'm probably gonna put one of my new Hoya in here that I unboxed. For you, that was on Tuesday. For me, that was this morning. <laughs> okay, I think that brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all for sending in those questions on Instagram. If you wanna be part of future videos, you can definitely follow me on there. I wanna give a huge thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Again, if you wanna check them out, the first thousand subscribers to click the link in my description box down below we'll get a one month free trial to skillshare i really appreciate all of you and i will see you in my next video bye